headline inflation 31.7%, while food inflation is at 37.92 for the month of February. And of course, this means that, this of course, according to the Bureau of Statistics, which of course means that the cost of living for the uh, average Nigerian is rising. And also, if you've got securities out there, you probably want a higher rate of return. So what does this mean uh, for um, the MPC as far as the next uh, meeting uh, is concerned? So we're going to be taking a look at that. Uh, we're very happy to have Kelvin Emanuel with us, economist board member at the uh, Obsidian uh, Acherna Markets. Kelvin, good morning. Good evening. We can be saying good morning. Good evening to you. Uh, we used to have you at the Global Business Reports in the mornings. You're very welcome, Kelvin. Good to see you. Good evening. What do you make of these latest inflation figures? Um, I'm not surprised. Yeah? I'm not surprised because, you know, the inflation is both cost push and demand pull. Mm. And I maintain that the central bank alone cannot tackle inflation. Because the conundrum is that you keep tightening monetary MPR, you know, they increased 400 basis points at the last meeting, very likely at their next meeting, maybe the end of the month. They've not announced they will have a meeting. I'm sure they were waiting to see what the inflation report today will be. Um, maybe they meet at the end of the month, and the inflation to interest yield curve differential has gone up from 7.15% to 8.95% for today's yep. report. And food inflation is over 37%. And for example, you saw what Moody's did. Moody's did with on, on Interswitch and MTN, for example. MTN yeah. has nearly 800 billion. Um, Dangote also has a lot of commercial papers. I think it's over 700 billion, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Um, a lot of these companies, when you look at their balance sheet, their net um, interest income, um, it's, been, it's taking a serious hit, hit because when you increase the NPR, the dependency on existing debt that a lot of these corporates have, you know, um, go up yep. and they have to pay more money in terms of uh, net expense. So when you look at the fact that raising NPR as a means to tighten um, 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 monetary policy to fight inflation, is going to lead to the non-performing loan book of commercial banks, you know, over seven or eight percent, which the central bank is trying to avoid. In a year where is CBN has just issued a new circular today, reminding the banks that the revaluation gains has to be kept because their um, gearing ratio, minimum capital, went down from three hundred million dollars thirty-four years ago. It's down to about seventy-five to eighty million dollars based on today's exchange rates, yeah. which means they have to recapitalize banks. You see that. Tightening monetary policy comes at a risk. Tightening monetary policy in order to raise the yields on fixed income comes at the risk of you exploding the balance sheet of the banks. It comes at the risk of the private sector not having access to credit to be able to produce, to be able to run their operational expenses. You know, so it's a bit of a conundrum. And that, this is why it's not enough for the MPC, for the CBN to be firing on all cylinders and bringing out all these circulars and making all these changes on net open positions, on BDC framework, on um, an interest rate mismatch, on um, um, a framework that governs how the foreign exchange market will work, possibly changing the Foreign Exchange Act. Amendments have been proposed by the Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and Financial Services on um, amendments to the CBN Act of 2007. It's not enough. The monetary authorities have to pick up from here. And Rotus, the number one topic here is revenue, revenue, yeah. revenue, revenue. USD revenues, we're reducing the debt financing in the budget, stop CBN overdraft. And I like what the, the Senate committee has proposed, for example, which is that they are going to place a hard stop that will debit from source mm. of the FG's account. Um, the accountant general has to pay the central bank after three months and stop advances that attracts 0.5% per month, graduating into overdrafts that takes MPR plus three. So MPR plus three at present level for ways and means will be 22.75 plus three. That's what the government will be paying to so the 25. Central Bank of Nigeria. So, yeah. you know, for me, I think Nigerians, yeah, there they, they were governance issues with the way the last Central Bank dispensation was handled, but Nigerians should not put all their hope on the Central Bank of Nigeria because they have... They, are, they have limits to how far they can drive the story on curbing inflation. And so far, you can see that even with the 400 basis point hike, inflation you know, still is still rising. Yeah. yeah. So are we looking at 
is the fiscal side that has to do the work here in terms of what to in terms of trying to um, temper inflation because there's the insecurity issues with the farms uh, with in food inflation 37 uh, something percent you've talked about the revenue issues um we were talking off air you were talking about you know cost of a barrel of oil as far as bringing it out of the ground so much of this falls on on the fiscal side then so you know we like to talk about you know exports diversified economy yeah. but the 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 crux of the matter aramco did 121 billion dollars in profits and record profit 31 billion to Saudi government the, dividends like the, the, like wow. you know um, their public investment fund which is the version of the sovereign wealth fund owns 16 percent of Aramco you know yeah. in Nigeria the Nigerian sovereign investment authority does not own any stake in um, sorry um, in in NNPC yeah. NNPC is a private company you know so the question you, you have to ask considering that the NSI has um, Future generation fund, stability fund, and infrastructure fund in it. You know, the question you have to ask is, what savings have you had so far in the NSI? Mm. Practically low, thirty billion dollars. Yeah, um, Saudi has eight hundred ninety billion dollars in um, investment, and Aramco is like a stabilizer for the economy. Yeah. So, what oil and gas revenues are you producing? NMPC does less than ten billion dollars a year. They have four sale agreements. Net net, Rotus. NMPC has less than 120,000 barrels of crude oil that actually comes to the federal government right now when you net out all the commitments and debts that right, it has. Right, so right. So even at that, even if you increase output, because the general story is, oh, increase output, yeah, good. Fight um, um, crude oil theft, you know, increase, um, you know, flow station to terminal, increase how much um, oil goes, you know, increase the amount of gas, which has gone up from 58 to 70 percent that goes to NLNG, yeah. you know. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to consider the fact that with your unit production cost per barrel today at $48.71, which is currently the highest in the world, and the, the House of Rep has confirmed this, you know, um, we are not getting much because it's basically your budget benchmark of $72 minus your unit production cost. In, in Iraq, Rotus, yeah. Iraq, Iraq is fighting a civil war. They've been fighting a civil war since um, 2002, 2003. Rutus in Iraq, unit yeah. production cost is ten dollars, um, seventy three cents for barrel. Yeah, really low. Really low. Yeah. In Saudi Arabia, it goes. It depends on where in Saudi Arabia you're producing. It goes from ten to twenty dollars per barrel. In Nigeria, it was between twenty two and twenty seven dollars per barrel ten years ago. So the question I I have because you know I, I keep getting this talk about oh um, pipeline surveillance. Pipeline surveillance is supposed to be under. The Security Trust Fund that is co-managed by both NMPC and international oil companies and NOCs. Yeah, um, community re community relations is under Petroleum Host Communities Act. Mm. Th there is no place in which you should negotiate community relations and pipeline surveillance under um, the unit production cost per barrel. Yeah. The government pays um, private contractors about six hundred billion naira for pipeline surveillance. So how does it even factor into the fact that today, as we speak, like? Your, 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 you have the highest unit production cost per barrel for a country that is not even able to fund its budget from crude oil. Same despite Russia. all the sanctions that Russia has, today, yeah, still... despite all the sanctions, Nord Stream 1 off, Nord Stream 2 was sabotaged. Mm. Yeah. They, they're building um, a third export pipeline to China yeah, to replace the um, capacity that has gone off. And yeah. Europe is building um, um, regasification um, units to be able to attract and store LNG for a long period of time. Europe, for example, Germany is completely pivoting away from, from um, Russian gas. Yeah. Uh, it's affected its manufacturing industry, but it's pivoting away. Despite all the sanctions, Russia was still able to do $99.4 billion in oil and gas revenues in 2023. So the, the, the question is, what's the excuse for Nigeria? Yeah. Yeah. What's the excuse for Nigeria? Nigeria last year did $1.1 billion in dividends from LNG. Mm. They did about um, $690 million in corporate income tax, and they did about $260 million in withholding taxes. It's not enough. Which is not enough. Yeah. You have six trains that were built from 1999 to 2005, mm. and since then, no president yeah. has added to that capacity. And even if you add to that capacity, you increase the inland infrastructure for LNG, the question now becomes, are you producing enough gas feed stock to be able to supply the plant? Crucial questions, Kelvin. Crucial. Look, we're going to see what happens with the next MPC meeting. And we've got to have you back to keep this conversation going. Thanks, Kelvin Emanuel, always, always, always a pleasure having you on the show. I appreciate you. Yeah.